I want to make one more conceptual point before we actually get into using props with React. This here is from the YouTube homepage. And while I'm pretty sure the YouTube homepage doesn't use React, since Google is the main backer of Angular, the concept will remain the same. Think for a second how this page may be developed in React. Something you'll begin to get really good at doing is noticing how something can be divided into separate components. For example, Notice that each of these separate pieces of the page are all very similar in their own way. If you notice, each one of them has an image on the top that takes up about the same amount of space. Each of them has a title, which is in bold and appears usually directly below the image. Each one has a number of views. Each one tells you how many days ago it was published. Each one has a little timestamp inside of the image that tells you how long it is. You can imagine that the creator of this page didn't actually go into the code and copy and paste this a bunch of times. If this were developed in React, then you can imagine there might be a video tile component that is created and that component has a number of components inside such as an image, maybe an h3, a little timestamp box, and so forth. The main point of what I just said is that it will be a single component that's developed once, but we need to make it so that that component can change depending on the different properties such as the image URL or the title. That's what we're going to be working on in the next video. Right before we move on though, I wanted to get you used to the idea of thinking in terms of React. Back a few lessons when we talked about parent and child components, that tree can go as deeply nested as you want. In fact, you can see here we have different lists. So there may be a component that is a list component, which renders a number of video tile components, which in themselves render an image and an H3 or whatever, like we talked about. Also over here on the left, you can see a number of things on the page that may have only been developed once as a single component, and then given a property of maybe a little image on the left and the text that should show up as part of the link. Hopefully you can see how the idea of web components and reusable HTML is really powerful, and this can help you understand why frameworks like Angular and React and Vue.js are very popular. So that's enough with the conceptual. Let's move on to some code and see how we actually do this in React.